Okay, good evening, brothers and sisters. Let us start with our uh, Friday teaching and let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given us, especially the gift of the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, given to us to be our mother also. Si Maria, ina ni Jesus, ibinigay sa amin upang maging amin ding ina. And today, of course, we are given grace as Mary is full of grace. Napupuno ng grasya. Naguumapaw ng biyaya. Uh, full and overflowing with grace. Kaya't binibigay sa amin ang biyayang ito. Kami ngayon narito pang talakay ng iyong turo sa amin. Your message for us to learn, for us to discuss. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Isa tutuwa ko nito yung mga kabataan. May ilan sa mga sakristan. Ilan lang. No? Mga kabataan. Marami rin, pero hindi pa rin kompleto. Nevertheless, so, I wish to start by the reading the Gospel. It was the gospel of yesterday. Meron maganda rin itong pagbasihan ng ating uh, pagtatalakay. So it's the gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others, Elijah, still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not 
as God does, but as human beings do. And it is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know, can you hear me? O mas malakas ba yung tugtug dun sa labas? Nakirinig niyo po ba? Naintindihan po? Okay. Okay. Before we go to the videos, I have to explain a little bit this, no? Kasi ito yung babalikan natin mamaya as the basis for the videos that will you will you will watch. No? Two parts itong ating pagbasa ngayon. The first part is of course asking Jesus asking the opinion, ano ba yung chismis tungkol sa akin? Yung mga sinasabi ni mga, ng mga marites. Yan, diba? And iba-iba. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, or one of the prophets. And then he asked his disciples, eh kayo, sino ako para sa inyo? Sinong pagkakilala ninyo? Who am I to you? And it is Peter who is the head of the apostles. Shall we say a representative of the entire church, the community of believers would say, you are the Christ. Ikaw ang Kristo. Okay. Which, kung tutusin, parang pareho din yung sinasabi nila. Because the Christ is meant to be the fulfillment of the prophets. Kung ano yung sinabi ng mga propeta, yun si Kristo ang pagdating niya. Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophets. At sino ba yun? John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah. Those are the prophets. Di ba? So Jesus is the Christ. Pero nakapagtataka na dito sa first part, pinuri ni Jesus si Peter. You are, at si Simon Peter, no? Simon, son of Jonah. Dito unang tinawag siyang Pedro. Now we have to understand, ano ba ibig sabihin ng Pedro? Peter means rock. Yung mga explanation ng mga INC, sabi daw sa, ang, ped, ang Pedro ibig sabihin, maliit lang na bato, parang graba lang daw. Pero that's a wrong exegesis. Petrus means a big rock. Hindi, hindi graba. O hindi, Malaking bato. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Petrus. No? Yun ang ibig sabihin. Even, even now, if you go to Jordan, meron nga pinupuntahan doon yung Petra. Bakit Petra means rock, bato. Talagang malaking bato. E yung buong, ang, buong dadaanan mo, talagang batong bato yon. So, hindi ito yung insignificant lang. Talagang Peter is a big rock. No, talagang malaking bato. Hindi pwedeng matinag. Kaya nga, the gates of hell, even of death, cannot prevail against it. Diba? Pero at the second part, sabi na ngayon ni Jesus, Get behind me, Satan. Bakit ganon? Again, may explanation si Jesus. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Yung tao, hindi. Dapat yung tungkol sa Diyos. Okay? This would be the basis. Babalikan natin to. Kasi yung sinabi sa first part, tungkol sa Diyos, tungkol sa langit. Whatever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Diba? So, okay. Let us now look at the first video. Kasi anong date ngayon? August 5. Yung nakatanggap ba kayo ng roses? Lahat kayo nakatanggap ng roses? Bakit kayo merong roses? Sino makapagsasabi? Sino mag-volunteer? O oh, sige, ikaw. Yan. 
Kilala nyo ba itong nagsasalita na to? Oh, the very famous, the one and only, oh, nag-iisa at hindi dapat tularan, no? si Jasper, o anong, bakit kayo may roses ngayon? Um, sinisimbolize po yung snow po nung summer po sa Rome. Okay. Kasi, today we also celebrate Our Lady of Snow. Snow. Diba? Yelong. Lumalag pa. Okay. Pero, bakit parang father, wala namang snow dito sa Philippines. Kaya nga, kaya nga roses na lang eh. Pero nga maya ipapakita natin sa video. Today is the anniversary of the dedication of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. Santa Maria Maggiore. It is the biggest church dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The biggest, talagang malaki. It is the most significant. It is the first church dedicated to the Virgin Mary in the West. Okay? Sige, ngayon, panoorin natin yung video. Can we now have the video? of the miracle of snow at Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. Like every year, snow fell in the middle of the Roman summer. This is the celebration of the miracle of snow when millions of white rose petals descend in front of the altar in the Basilica of St. Mary Major. It's a centuries-old tradition that has taken root among the Romans. Maria has been participating in this celebration for 20 years. There are no words to describe the emotion one feels when seeing the petals fall from the sky onto the altar. It touches your heart. The petals fall and look like snowflakes. It's a beautiful thing. It's a sign of the miracle that led to the first church dedicated to the Virgin Mary in the West. Inside, the image of the patroness of Rome, Salus Populi Romani, is protected. It means a lot. Every year I come with my friend. I always come. I come with my relatives. It touches us spiritually. One has to come and participate in this profound experience, and that's why we come. According to tradition, on August 5, 358, Pope Liberius and an elderly couple dreamt the Blessed Mother asked them to build a church where she would indicate with snow in the middle of summer. It happened on Esquilin Hill, where the church stands today. It was built in 431, and thousands of people come every day. I've come here to St. Mary Major to feel that warmth, that emotion. Faith and believing in the Word of God is something I feel and carry in my heart. It's a nice memory of Rome. St. Mary Major is one of the four papal basilicas in Rome. For Pope Francis, it has a special meaning. He prayed in this church the day after his election as Pope. He also goes to the icon of the patroness of Rome when leaving or returning from an international trip. So that's the first video. Ano yung sabi doon? Of course, you cannot recreate because it is a miracle of snow in the middle of summer. Ang August, summer para sa Rome, in Europe. E kailan ba nagkakaroon ng snow? Siyempre, winter, di ba? Paano magkakaroon ng snow sa summer? And this is what happened. Pope Liberius had a dream the night before, August 4. Pero hindi lang pala siya yun na naginip. Also, a patrician uh, couple, magkasawa, walang anak, they also had the same dream. At ano yon? In that particular part, what they call the Exquilin Hill, there was snow in the middle of summer. So when the Pope woke up, kinikwento niya ngayon, nagbe-breakfast siya. Siguro may meron siyang waiter doon o kung sino mang alalay niya. 
Yung sabi niya, oh, na naginip ako, can you imagine? The Virgin Mary showed herself in a dream to me. Sabi niya, I want a church dedicated to the Virgin Mary, to me, you know, as the mother of God. And I will show you where it is, where you will find snow in the middle of summer. Oh. Kaya ngayon, so nagkakwentuhan sila, biglang may pumasok, ibinalita sa kanila, oh, nagkakagulo yung mga tao doon. Why? Kasi meron ng snow doon sa paligid ng isang palasyo doon. So the Pope and his attendants rushed to the place to find this patrician couple. Nagsabi, we had a dream also. And the instruction of the Virgin Mary, i-donate daw namin itong aming palasyo, itong property to become the church of Our Lady. No? And it is also opportune because it was just defined by the Council of Ephesus uh, that was in, uh, in, in Ephesus, of course. Ephesus is marapit sa Turkey. No? In the, that council defined Mary as the mother of God, Theotokos. Yun naman ang ating sinecelebrate pagka January 1. Diba? January 1, para sa everybody else, civil calendar, New Year. But for us, it is the solemnity of Mary as the mother of God. This is the first church dedicated to Mary in the West. Oh, in the West. Ibig sabihin, Latin Rite. Tayo, kasama tayo doon. So, hindi na natupad doon. So, Pope Liberius dedicated that church as the Basilica. Kaya ang tawag, another name for that is the Liberian Basilica. Because it was Pope Liberius who, who pronounced that this will become the Church of St. Mary Majors. Bakit St. Mary Majors? Mary Majors kasi this is the first, the most important Church of the Virgin Mary. Okay? Yun na kaya major. Majore. Major. So, hindi naman natin pwede nilang i-recreate yung snow kasi it was a miracle. So, every year, they just had petals coming from the ceiling. No? And this particular church is really very big. Actually, itong simbahan natin is just the sacristy of that church, no? Malaki ba ito simbahan natin? Malaki na ba ito? Parang chapel lang ito at ako sa Christi do sa... Malaki talaga yung simbahan. And it is major because it was significant not just for Rome. Yung Rome, of course, the patroness of Rome. Uh, yung nandito kanina, no? Yung nandun na, nilalagay na nila sa motorcade. Maria... Salus Populi Romani. Mary, the health or the salvation of the people of Rome. No? Salus Populi Romani. Yung tagapagdigtas o yung it can be savior, it can be health, kalusugan. No? Because at that time, there was pestilence and it's their devotion to the Virgin Mary that stopped the spread of pestilence. Can even Pope Francis, di ba meron siyang prayer, it was dedicated to this particular icon of the Virgin Mary. And it is said that the painting, makita nyo, it's very old, very crude. They say it is painted by St. Luke, the evangelist. No? Kailangan nyo St. Luke, di ba? The Gospel according to St. Luke. Sabi nila, it is painted by St. Luke the Evangelist. Huh? Now again, what do you find in that church? During the time of the crusade, siyempre, 
the Crusaders lost to the to Saladin, the Muslims. They took the crib of the baby Jesus. Yung samsaban. Diba? The manger. They took it from Bethlehem and transported it to Rome. Nandun ngayon sa ilalim ng altar ng St. Mary Majors. Andun yung sa, saan inilagay si Jesus nung kanyang kapanganakan. The manger is there. The ceiling, ang ganda-ganda ng ceiling. This, diba Spain, we are a colony of Spain. You know that, diba? But before Spain discovered us, yung America muna ang na-discover. When the Americas was dis the, the discovered, they had gold. They mined gold. The first shipment of gold from the Americas was donated to the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore. Kaya yung kanilang kisame ay gold leaf. The real gold, the first gold that is mined from the Americas. Nandoon ngayon sa Santa Maria Maggiore. And there are many saints who also went there on pilgrimages, on devotion. You have the kind like Saint Cayetan, Saint Ignatius of Loyola celebrated his first mass there in that basilica you know, as thanksgiving. Si Saint Charles Borromeo, yung seminaryo namin named after Saint Charles Borromeo, would often pray. And even the popes, John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and right now, Pope Francis. Diba napanood nyo, diba? Every time that he would leave Rome, magpapaalam muna siya sa kay nanay. Doon, kay Maria Salus Populi Romani. And when he comes back, gaya nyo, he had a pilgrim, he had a visit to Canada. On his way back to Rome, he again offered flowers to this icon of Santa Maria Salus Populi Romani. Okay? So very significant itong church na ito. Kaya every, every August 5, yun ang ginagawa nila. Petals are thrown from the ceiling to the high altar. Pero ngayon, medyo high-tech na. And they could not perhaps have snow inside but now, they are recreating the snow outside the basilica. Can we please see now the second video?
facade of Santa Maria Maggiore. Now, ngayon, they can produce the snow, but definitely, during the time of Pope Liberius, it was impossible. Wala namang snow machine noon eh. No, wala talaga. It was really, definitely a miracle. What was important about the snow? What was important about the snow? We could not actually find out. Totoo ba talagang nangyari? Kasi it was so long ago, no? Imagine 4th century AD. But what is important is this. Having snow in summer would tell us that the Virgin Mary can make the miracle happen. Diba? Alam natin si Mama Mary is human. Tao siya kagaya natin. Diba? Si Jesus ang Diyos. You would understand Jesus can make miracles. Diba? But the Virgin Mary can also have the miracle. Hindi pwede magkaroon ng snow sa tag-init. But it also tells us even more important, if the Virgin Mary can make these things physical happen, how much more that the Virgin Mary can also ask Jesus to have spiritual miracles to happen? More than... Kasi di ba, maganda nga naman yung physical miracle. Eh, pero ngayon, with modern technology, nagagawa na nga ang snow eh. Pero yung the spiritual miracle, the lady, the Virgin Mary is inviting us not just to see the worldly, but to lift our eyes to God. Lift our eyes to God. Somewhat like what Jesus was saying here. You are thinking not as God does, but as men do. Iangat naman natin yung ating paningin doon sa langit, sa Diyos. No? Sa Diyos. That is the reason why this particular church, Santa Maria Maggiore, napakalapit kasi niya doon sa opisina ng Apostolic Penitentiary. The Apostolic Penitentiary is the office of the Holy Father that grants indulgence. Ano ba itong indulhensya? I would say it is a miracle granted in the spiritual sense. Because yung indulgence is by definition uh, the remission, pagtanggal, sa mga temporal punishments that the penitent should receive. Ibig sabihin, kahit na ikaw ay nagkumpisal na at kahit ikaw pinatawad na ng Panginoong Diyos, meron pa ring parusa. There is what we call, you have the consequence of sin. Diba? Nananatili pa din yung temporal punishment na yon. But, the idea of indulgence is that even the temporal punishment can be erased through the prayer of the Virgin Mary. Of course, not her own, not her own grace, but the grace of Jesus, her Son. Magbigay ako ng halimbawa. Pagbigyan ko na halimbawa. May mga nagda-drive sa inyo dito. Sino mga nagda-drive? Taas nga ng kamay, sino mga nagda-drive sa inyo? Ayan, nagda-drive. Nagda-drive ka ba? Bata ka pa, may lisensya ka na ba? Ha? Sabihin na natin, nagda-drive kayo. Eh, may nabangga kayong kotse. May nabangga kayong kotse. Yan. So, Ikaw ngayon, ano gagawin mo? Yung iba, ano pag kayong jeepney driver, eh, makikipagtagisan ng talino. Sabihin, ikaw may kasalanan. So, pero, masabuti yung aminin mo na lang, di ba? 
Aminin mo yung pagkakasala mo. Humingi ka ng tawad. Pasensya na po kayo kasi medyo nagmamadali po ako eh. Nalito po ako sa pagdadrive. Bago lang po ako nagdadrive eh. Okay. Sabihin na natin mabait yung may-ari ng sasakyan na nabangga ninyo. Ah, ganun ba? Sige, kawawa ka naman. O, oh, sige. Okay na lang. Patatawarin na kita. E eh, paano naman itong nabangga mo? Paano naman ito? ba? Diba? E eh, ikaw ang bumangga niyan. Ikaw may kasalanan niyan. Ibig sabihin, ganun na lang ba yun? Paano ito? Magkahagastos ako dito. Hindi naman akong may kasalanan dito. Pinatatawad kita, pero paano itong gasgas dito? ba? Diba? Nandun pa din yun eh. May liability ka pa din yun kasi that's the consequence of your sin. ba? Diba? Pero, kung talagang nagmakaawa ka at kung talagang mabait yung ano, sige na nga, kawawa ka naman. Kakagastos ako nito, paano ba ito? O sige na nga, hindi bali na lang. Okay na lang, sige. Wag na, wag mo na intindihin. Ako nang bahala dito. Diba? Yun yung indulgence. Kahit pinatawad ka na, meron ka pa rin liability. Kailangan bayaran mo pa din yung gastos dun sa, dun sa nabangga mo eh. Diba? And that is fair. Diba? Katarungan lang naman yun. Diba? Pinatawad kita pero... Paano yun? Di ba? Pero dahil sa kabaitan, sige na nga, ako na lang magpapagawa niyan. Sige na, okay na. Huwag mo na intindihin. Yun ang indulgence. Do you get it? Naintindihan niyo na ba? We go through life, nagkakasala tayo, pumupunta tayo sa kumpisal, pinatawad na tayo ng pare, Okay. Hindi nagtatapos doon kasi paano yung mga naargabyado natin sa ating ginawang mali? Meron pa rin consequence yun. Pagbabayaran pa rin natin yun dito sa mundo. Unless merong mag intervene at sasabihin, sige na, huwag mo nang intindihin yun. And that is indulgence. Now, anong basihan ito? Balikan natin yung ating gospel na binasa ko kanina. Hindi ko na-discuss yung sa first part. Jesus says to Peter, You are rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. Ang simbahan, ang katawan ni Kristo, ang simbahan, ito ang nagdi-decision. O sige, ito yung I will bind, ito I will lose. May kapangyarihan ang simbahan na makiusap sa Panginoon, sabihin, Lord, alisin na lang natin to, Pwede ba? Patawarin mo na lang. Tanggalin na lang natin ito. Huwag yun na siyang Wag mo na siyang pagbayarin. Pwede ba? Ganon. So, indulgence is the prayer of the church. Oh. Kaya nga, Mary is part of the church. Bahagi si Maria ng simbahan. Kaya nga, during the Pentecost, Mary was there with the apostles. To signify that Mary is part of the church. Bahagi siya ng simbahan. Okay. So, with our affinity with Santa Maria Maggiore, meron tayong connection dun sa Santa Maria Maggiore. The Apostolic Penitentiary, which is the office of the Holy Father, the Church grants indulgence to our Church. Para tayong naging branch ng Santa Maria Maggiore. No, parang kagaya doon, no? nag-bless ako ng Jollibee. Isang beses, bukas tayong Jollibee dyan sa Michelle. 
doon sa may Kirino. Nakita niyo na ba yun? Uh, bukas na yun, may drive-thru doon. Dito kasi yung Jollibee dito, walang drive-thru, no? Yun, yun ang bago yun, mas malaki yun. Branch, Jollibee yun, Jollibee yun. Hindi ito Santa Maria Major, eh. Tayo ay, anong pangalan natin? The Yosisan Shrine and Parish of Our Lady of Mercy. Pero, ang biyaya na nagmumula doon sa Basilika, ibinibigay din sa atin. Oh. Pwede tayong magbigay nito sa sino man ang pumapasok dito sa ating simbahan. May indulgence doon. Every time that the pilgrims would go to the Basilica, there is that indulgence. Kahit hindi kayo pumunta doon sa Basilica, dito lang kayo nagpunta, parang nagpunta na rin kayo doon. You receive the same grace, ang biyaya with the plenary indulgence. Okay. Let's go to the third video, please. Paragraph 1471 of the Catechism defines an indulgence as a remission before God of the temporal punishment due to sins whose guilt has already been forgiven. This presupposes that punishment remains after God has forgiven our sins and that we can do something to satisfy it. But is this biblical? I think it is. The Bible is full of examples of God remitting the eternal punishment due to sin while still willing the temporal consequences. For example, David is forgiven of his sin in 2 Samuel chapter 12, but must still suffer the death of his son. The psalmist says in Psalm 99, 7-8 that God forgives but avenges wrongdoing. Even Jesus teaches in Luke 12, 47 through 48, that the servant who did what is deserving of punishment without full knowledge will be punished, but in lesser degree. It is such temporal consequences that indulgences remit. By virtue of its authority to bind and loose, the church declares certain acts to be of such value that if they are performed under certain prescribed conditions, Sin's temporal consequences can be remitted, either partially or fully. It's no different than Jesus' teaching in Luke 11, 41, Give alms, and behold, everything is clean for you. The church grants indulgences to help its children heed St. Paul's exhortation in Philippians 2, 12, Work out your salvation, and to cooperate with God in bringing to completion the good work He has begun in us. Philippians 1, 6. So the motifs of temporal consequences due to sin and the church's authority to bind and loose make a solid biblical foundation for the Catholic dogma of indulgences. If you want to learn more about this topic and others like it, visit our website at catholic.com. For Catholic Answers, I'm Corlo Brusor. Thanks for watching. Mabilisa, no? <laughs> Pero, if you want to go back to that, Pwede yung i-replay itong yung video na to sa Facebook eh. But those are the biblical basis for the, the indulgence. No? Let me go back to a certain point. Remember, I told you that it was Pope Liberius who had a dream. But there was also the patrician couple. Iba ang mag-asawa. Patrician couple. They are the ones who donated the property. Sila yung nag-donate nito. Okay. Meron tayong simbahan na pinupuntahan, lalo na pagka Holy Week, yung, yung groto sa tungko. Yan. Yun ang problema kasi dito eh. Ayaw nilang ibigay sa simbahan yung groto. Ayaw nilang ibigay sa simbahan yung groto. The sad thing about it is this. This is an invitation for grace. Alam nyo, of course, sinasabi na nung panahon daw ng mga Kastila, may mga pari daw, inuulukan daw yung mga matatanda na 
para pagmamamatay na idonate mo na lang sa simbahan o para bagang kinukurakot daw ng simbahan yung mga ari-arian ng mga mga matatanda na, ma, na malapit ng mamatay but uh, the point here is this ang tinuturo naman dito ay what is important for you ang mundo ba o ang langit Remember, the reason for this is you, got, you are given the gift of remission of temporal punishment. Para nga hindi ka na maghirap eh. And to earn points, your names will be written in heaven. E tinan yung nangyari doon. Yung parents, sila yung nag-pilgrimage nun dati sa Lourdes. Eh, they wanted to have that yung sa kanilang lote. Hindi i-denonate ng parents. Pero siguro, hindi ko alam kung they wanted to. Pero ayaw ng mga anak. So ngayon, ano ito? Yung pumupunta doon, naloloko lang sila, di ba? Kasi yung hindi naman mga katolikong pare yung nagmimisa doon. Kumisan, baka aglipay o baka pariparian lang. Mga fake priests, di natin alam. Saan napupunta yung collection, yung donation? Saan napupunta? E di binubulsa ng pamilya. So sila yung kumikita. Pero ang intensyon ng tao, akala nila pumupunta yun sa simbahan. Akala nila nagbibigay sila para sa kanilang kaligtasan ng kaluluwa nila. Yun pala ang nangyayari. Pinayayaman lang pala nila yung may-ari. Di ba? Kaya ngayon, that's a question. Di ba? The point here, really here of indulgence and the spiritual affinity is andito tayo sa mundo pero lalahanin natin Itong mundong ito ay pangsamantala lamang. Huwag yung gawing pangsamantagal. Di ba meron gano'n, di ba? Kayo mga kabataan, pangsamantagal daw. Hindi. Ang mundong ito ay pangsamantala lamang. Kaya use, that's the gospel of Sunday, di ba? Use the things of this world so that you can earn points in heaven. So kung ginagamit mo itong mga kayamanang ito, hindi para makapunta sa langit, pero mas lalo kang yumayaman dito. Diba last Sunday, ano sabi ng Panginoon? You fool! No? Ulul ka! Ngayon, susulit ko ang buhay mo. I will have an accounting of your life. Saan pupunta ngayon yung... Meron bang pwedeng magdala ng kanyang ari-arian sa langit? Wala. Hindi mo pwedeng tangayin yan papunta sa langit. Did you also remember yung kwento ko about yung instruction nung, nung asawang mamamatay? Hindi yun ba naalala? Ay, hindi yata kayo nagsimba. Gusto nyo ikwento ko ulit? O wag na lang. Naantok na ba kayo? Inaantok. Pwede ba? Pwede ba siguro? Matag- Medyo maigsi lang. Sabi kasi nung kwento, ganito. May mag-asawa. Yung mister, sabi ng doktor, nako po, may cancer kayo. May taning ng buhay nyo, mamamatay na po kayo. Labas nyo na lang ng ospital, alagaan na lang sa bahay. So maganda sana yon na si mister, alam niyang mamamatay siya, pwede siyang maghanda, di ba? Para salubungin niya ang Panginoon sa langit, di ba? Eh, kaso ang instruction ni Mr. kay Mrs. ganito, tatlo ang instruction niya. Una, i-withdraw mo lahat ng pera ko sa bangko. Pangalawa, ilagay mo lahat ng pera ko doon sa attic. Alam niyo attic, di ba? Yung, yung lugar doon sa ibabaw ng kisame at saka nung bubong doon. Pangatlo, ilagay mo yung kama ko doon sa ilalim nung atik kung saan naroon yung pera ko. Sabi nung misis, 
Bakit ganun? Parang mali yata yan. Hindi, basta sumunod ka. Bakit nga? Bakit nga? Sabi ng misis. Para kung mamatay ako, pag yung kaluluwa ko, hihiwalay na sa katawan ko, pupunta ako doon sa taas, tatangayin ko yung pera ko, papunta doon sa langit. Sabi ng misis, mali yan, mali yan. O, mali yan. Anyway, namatay nga si mister. Siyempre, nagkagulgulo, naglamay, libing. Pakalipas ang ilang araw bago pa na wala ng tao, tahimik na, naalala ni misis, nasa na kaya yung pera? Nandun pa kaya? Sa palagay nyo, nandun pa kaya? Oo nga, tinignan ni misis, nandun pa nga yung pera. Kaya sabi ni misis, sabi ko na nga ba sa mister ko eh, maling-mali talaga yun eh. Dapat, dapat, pinalagay niya yung pera sa basement. End of story. Nakuha niyo ba yung kwento? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Bakit kailangan sa basement ilagay yung pera? Ha? Ibig sabihin sa isip ng misis niya, naku, hindi ito pupunta sa langit. Pupunta to sa impyerno. Hindi yun pupunta sa langit. Kasi, Ando na nga, binibigyan ka na nga ng pagkakataong maghandas para to meet the Lord. Pera pa din iniintindi mo. Hindi ka pupunta sa langit, pupunta ka sa impyerno. Pero kahit na, kahit na pupunta siya sa impyerno, sabihin na natin, ando nga inilagay nga sa basement, namatay siya. Matatangay ba niya yung pera niya papunta sa impyerno? Hindi. Masus- Kung matangay man niya doon, masusunog pa din yung sa impyerno. <laughs> diba? Diba? Hindi pa din eh. Hindi mo matatangay yan sa langit, sa kabilang buhay. Kaya nga't yung, yung whatever it is, no? sayang na, the, the, this couple donated their property and they merit salvation. Walang katumbas yun. O nga, malaki yung property nila yon. Hindi sila lugi doon. Abay, mas malaki naman yung nakuha nilang biyaya na sila'y napunta sa langit, di ba? Eh, ewan ko na lang, no? If you remember yung mga nagpunta sa yung leadership seminar sa North Sagaray, taas nga ang kamay, sino-sino yung mga yon? Okay. Natandaan ninyo, pumunta tayo doon sa Padre Pio. Okay. Siguro wag na tayong babalik doon. Kasi isa ta naman yun. Ayaw ding i-donate sa simbahan yung lugar. Pareho yun. No? Sa parehong sa Bulacan yun. Eh. Isa, parehong sa diocese ng Malolos. Ayaw nila. It- Kaya nga tingnan nyo po. Oh, yung Padre Pina yun, ang tagal-tagal na hindi pa nila natatapos yung kanilang chapel. Di ba ba? Ganon din yung sa groto. Ang tagal-tagal na hindi pa rin nila natatapos yun. Kasi nga, eh, pinagkakakitaan lang nila eh. Hindi pumupunta sa simbahan. No, yung intention para sa simbahan. Kagaya nito, pumupunta tayo dito. Everything that you do here, you pray, you attend the Mass, you donate, these are all points for you to enter heaven. Hindi ko sinasabi ito para para yumaman ako. Hindi naman ako, hindi na pupunta sa akin yung pera ninyo eh, no? no? But everything that you you lahat naman ng binibigyan niyo dito ay bumabalik din lahat sa atin. Oh, yan, may ilaw tayo, may microphone. Oh, may FB live. Yan lahat ito. Sa atin at sa atin din tayo din nakikinabang. No? Everything that we do, naglilingkod kayo. It is also for your good. Everything that we do, given this church. Okay? So, there are ways that we, medyo matagal-tagal tong video na to, no? pero at least some of the explanations na bigay ko na, eto, The next video again is about indulgence. Can we see now the video?
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn to Mary and ask for her special blessings, as always, as we say the prayer that she loves most. And that prayer is the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my Lord, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let's pray the Holy Spirit. Say the prayer we all love and we all have memorized by now. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your Spirit, and it shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of your earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the same Spirit may be truly wise and ever rejoice. In his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, all God's angels and saints, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, we all want to go to heaven. We all want to go to heaven. I need to tell you a very encouraging story that we heard on Catholic radio the other day. They help us to get to heaven. That's why we're here. Why are we created? To know God, to love God, to serve God, to be with Him forever in heaven. That's what the Catechism teaches us, right? We're here to know God, love God, to serve God in this life so that we can be with Him forever in heaven. Okay, here's a very interesting story of a nun, a nun's convent. And it was this. Mother Superior was able to see where the nuns that died, where they went. It was a very special mystical race. So there was a nun in the convent that uh, wasn't bad, but wasn't really that holy either. It was kind of like a, an average, an average nun. And um, she died. And Mother Superior asked Jesus, well, where did that nun, where was that nun now? Think that she's probably going to be, spend some kind of purgatory. Jesus said, she went right to heaven. And the Mother Superior said, well, how did she get to heaven right away? She didn't seem to be really that holy. And Jesus said this, because she took advantage of what the church offers. I'll explain. So remember that she took advantage of what the church offers. It wasn't said in the story, but I think it refers to the, the free gift that the church gives us, or what are called indulgences. So if you receive a, a, if you receive a plenary indulgence, all of your sins are forgiven. And all of your temporal punishment is, is purified. So that being the case, I'm going to tell all of you the five steps to make to receive a plenary Okay, can we stop the video, please? So that we can, if you want to look at this picture here. Okay. Balikan natin yung kanyang example. Did, did you, were you able to hear clearly? Sabi niya doon, there was the superior of a convent of sisters who had some spiritual visions. No, meron daw siya mga pangitain. No? Meron daw isang kapwa madre nila na namatay, kamamatay lang ng isang madre. And itong superior asked Jesus, kamusta po itong madre namin na namatay? Uh, ilan po sa if I would ask you, sino sa inyo dito ang siguradong sigurado na pag namatay kayo, eh pupunta na kayong diretso sa langit? Can you please raise your hand? Wala ba? Wala bang mabait sa inyo? Kapiraso lang. Kapiraso lang. Well, according to his example, sabi nung, nung madre, parang medyo 
na ag-aalasa kasi hindi naman masamang tao itong madre pero hindi ba siya yung talagang mabait na mabait? Ngayon ba ko minsan, mainitin yung ulo, may naka, napapaaway. Kuminsan, natutokso, napapakain ng sobra. Yan. Kuminsan, napapachismis. Yan. No? Kuminsan, eh, uh, natutokso na maging tamad. Ba? Kuminsan eh, yung bang dapat gumising ng maaga, eh, napapahimbing ng tulog. Ba? Lalo na ngayon, di ba? medyo lumalamig ng panahon. No? Eh, napapahimbing sa tulog, hindi nagigising ng maaga. Yan. May katamaran. Kuminsan eh, talagang eh, nagiging selfish. Ganyan. So, hindi naman malalaking kasalanan nyo. But nevertheless, sabihin natin, you cannot go to heaven immediately ng ganun lang. Ano? Kasi, kasi you have to be pure and holy to go to heaven. And according naman do sa kwento nung ni Father, ang sabi naman ni Jesus, I don't worry about her. She's already here in heaven. Sabi naman ng superior, ha? Akala ko, ganun bang kadali pumunta sa heaven? Ganun ba? Eh, parang medyo pinoproblema ko nga yan. Medyo matigas ang ulo dyan eh. Medyo mga napapaaway nga yan sa ibang mga madre, no? Bakit naman pumunta ka agad sa, sa langit? The answer of Jesus was this. She took advantage of everything that the church offered her. Sinunggaban niya yung pagkakataon na ibinigay sa kanya ng simbahan. Okay? Ibig sabihin doon, hindi naman siya karapat dapat. So, hindi siya karapat dapat. Oh, kasi nga naman eh, medyo mal, maloko-loko din si sister. No? <laughs> hindi siya yung, hindi, yung, hindi siya yung pang Padre Pio, no? hindi pang, uh, pang St. Jude. Yeah, no? yeah. Hindi ganon. Medyo maloko si sister. But, she took advantage of what the church offered her. At ano yung sinasabi dito? It's about the indulgence. Oh. Siguro wag na natin ituloy yung video na yun, pero kasi parang mahirap pakinggan, ano? Na, nahirap pa kayo pakinggan, no? Pero I will give you now the... What are the five steps na sinasabi niya doon? Ako na magtutuloy. First, you need to be in the state of grace. Hindi ko ba sinabing... Masamang tao ka, pupunta ka sa langit, gano'n na lang. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Hindi pwedeng lokohan din ito. Kailangan din eh, nagsisikap ka din, nagpapakabait ka din. No? No? Yung bang medyo magino pero medyo bastos lang, gano'n. Pero hindi yung bastos na bastos talaga. No? Nagpapakabait din naman. You have to be in the state of grace. Now, kayo ba are you in the state of grace? Are you? Wala kang kasalanan. <laughs> Para natin masigurado na tayo walang kasalanan, magkumpisal. Diba? That is the way. Go to confession so that your sins will be forgiven. Diba? Go to confession. So that's the first step. Go to confession. Second, Receive the Holy Eucharist. Magkumunyong ka. Siyempre, mag-receive ka. Diba? Receive the Eucharist. And then, pray for the intention of the Holy Father. Pray for the intention of the Holy Father. Okay. Of course, it has to be in the situation, like the churches the physical presence in the church. Gaya dito, indulgence is given here. Oh, here. So, kailangan pupunta ka dito. Oh, physically. 
and then you fulfill the requirements. And then, fifth of all, at least you have the intention of doing your best to be good. Kahit na alam mo magkakasala ka pa din, pero at least, sabi ko, I will do my best. Magsisika pa din ako na magpakabuti. No? Now, here in the shrine and parish of Our Lady of Mercy, there are certain occasions. Ah, wait. I'll try to find it first time. Ah, here, here, here. According to the document that was presented, no, yung pinadala ng the apostolic penitentiary, there are certain occasions wherein indulgence can be given to the people who would come here. First, ngayon, on the feast day of the dedication of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. Ngayon. Today is the day that you can have indulgence. Okay. Second, on the feast day of the our church. Kailan lang feast day natin? September 24. On the very fiesta. Can you imagine? Fiesta na natin. Anniversary ng coronation ng ng uh, ng uh, image ng Our Lady of Mercy. And it's also a day to merit indulgence. Third, all solemnities of the Virgin Mary. All solemnities of the Virgin Mary. Lahat ng mga kapistahan ng Virgin Mary may dadating. August 15 is the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. And then after that, September 8, birth of the Virgin Mary. Diba? And then, uh, when was that? Basta lahat ng kapistahan ng, of course, yung Our Lady of Mercy. Kapistahan din yung Our Lady of Mercy. And then, you may choose any day, kahit na walang kapistahan, basta once a year, you an individual can choose your own particular day. Huh? Any day that you want. Basta once a year. And number five is when we have a group that goes on pilgrimage here in our parish church. Here in this church where we, you have the spiritual bond of affinity. So again, lima yon. You can merit indulgence today, August 5, which is the dedication of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. Second, the fiesta of our church, September 24. Third, all solemnities of the Virgin Mary. Fourth, once a year of your own choice. Huh? And fifth, every time that you go on pilgrimage as a group to our church, as an extension of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. Huh? Can you imagine that? Okay. Now, and dami dami occasion. Take advantage of the gift that is offered to you. I want you now to go to the fifth video which is the June 6, 2021 Mass of the Noon Show. No? Kung kailan dineclare na tayo ay uh, a branch or a spiritual affiliate of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. Can we have that video, please?
interested in Nova Leaches, Diocese, Nova Leaches. The church itself has been inscribed by the register of the Basilica with the accompanying document of the Apostolic Penitentiary by which the indulgences have been duly granted. The present testimony is given under an order that the faithful and the pilgrims would acknowledge just this testimony for the growth and through strengthening of their piety. Given in Rome on the sixth day of the third month in the year 2020.